Safe loads on a part generally mean that the stresses caused by them will not overcome the material properties like the yield strength or the ultimate strength and that the deformations caused by them will not be excessive. The stability of a structure refers to its ability to withstand a load without undergoing a sudden change in configuration. Specifically for columns, a compressive force can be so high that the column is no longer only subjected to compression, but to a bending moment that causes it to bend. This sudden change in configuration due to the bending is what we call buckling. The load for the column to lose its stability is called the critical load and we use the P sub CR notation for it. If P is lower than P critical, the system is stable. If P is greater than P critical, the system is unstable and the column will buckle. The critical load P critical can be calculated using Euler's formula which is derived from the case where the column is pin-ended, meaning pin supports at both ends, top and bottom. Besides the critical load, a critical normal stress can also be defined using Euler's formula. Factors of safety are defined either for the load or the stress. From the pin-ended equation, we can extrapolate the expression for different end conditions, and we use the effective length of a column calculations for using that expression. For a column that is pin connected at both ends, a centric load P can be applied to cause a compressive axial load. If the load and its reaction at the other end are perfectly aligned, then the buckling will never happen. But since this idealistic scenario is in practice never achievable, we'll take the beam in its buckled state and perform a cut at a distance x from the top. Notice that I'm using X as the vertical axis and Y as the horizontal axis because we're used to the beam deflection equations that we'll use in a minute and a column is nothing more than a beam subjected to a horizontal compressive load. So it makes sense to keep using X as the axis of the beam slash column. A free body diagram of the cut would show as a reaction load P prime and a reaction moment M at Q where the reaction moment would be minus P times Y. Recalling that the second derivative of deflection is m over ei, link below to that specific part of the 10 minute beam deflection video where we prove this relationship, we see that the second derivative plus py over ei must be zero. This is a linear homogeneous differential equation. If we set alpha squared to be p over ei, the expression can be rewritten to see that the general solution of the y function is a sine of alpha x plus b cosine alpha x. This is the generalized solution because if we differentiate this y twice, the original expression is indeed zero. So this y function does meet the requirements. The boundary conditions that must be satisfied are two. For x equal to zero, y is equal to zero since there's a pin at that location. Substituting the values for this boundary condition, we see that b is 0. The other boundary condition is at the other pin, where y is still 0 for x equal to l. Substituting these values, we see that a sine of alpha l has to be 0. Since a can't be 0, otherwise the solution to y is y equal to 0, sine of alpha l has to be 0. Since the sine function is 0 for multiples of pi, the value for alpha times L has to be equal to N times pi. And since alpha squared was P over EI, we can solve for P and the critical load P critical would be the first and lowest of those multiples N for N equal to 1. This is the expression that we know as Euler's formula. The equation of the elastic curve, meaning the equation that describes how the deformed column looks like, would be found by substituting this critical load expression in the y equation that we had in terms of a and alpha. With this elastic curve equation, for any location x along the column, we can see what its deflection y would be. If the external load p is less than p critical, sine of alpha l would not be able to be zero, which means that a has to be zero, and therefore the column would not be buckled. Therefore, if P is less than P critical, no buckling happens. The second moment of area I will be the lowest, meaning that the column will buckle over the axis that has the lowest I value. For example, a ruler under compression would not buckle right or left, but front or back, of course. 
Since we can write this second moment of area as the area times r squared, where r is the radius of gyration, the critical stress, which is p critical over area, would be pi squared e over l over r squared. The l over r fraction is what we call the slenderness ratio of the column. Now, this was all done for a column that has pin-connected ends. Let's take a look at other types of end conditions. A column with one free end at A and a fixed end at B is basically just half the column that we were just analyzing, meaning a half a pin connected column. This means that we can calculate the critical load P if we use 2L instead of L. To simplify this process for the other end conditions, we'll just use L sub E for the effective length of all cases, and just remember that the effective length is L for pin ends and 2L for free end to fixed end columns. The effective length LE over R would then be called the effective slenderness ratio. Now for a column with two fixed ends, AC and BC are symmetric, because of the loads P and P prime and the moments M and M prime. Section AC would also be symmetric about its midpoint D since the moment about D should be zero. Since the moment at the pins of a pin ended column are also zero, section D to E, the other midpoint of the bottom part, would be just like a pin ended column of length L over two. The effective length of a fixed end column is therefore L over 2. A column with one fixed end B and one pin connected end A is a little more complex. The free body diagram shows that a transverse for V exists on A to counteract the moment and another on B to counteract that first V. If we write the second derivative of Y expression that we used before, now substituting M with the two terms we get, and we redo the whole differential equation analysis, this time with a linear, non-homogeneous differential equation, we get an expression for y that with the same boundary conditions results in a critical load p expression of 20.19 ei over l squared. If this should be equal to the general equation for critical p with an effective length instead of just l, we see that the equivalent length for the fixed pin end condition is 0.699L or just 0.7L. With some of the most common end conditions now studied, let's look at a simple example of column buckling and if you want to check out more complex examples or any of the other main 10 minute videos of the Mechanics of Materials course, don't forget to check those links in the description below. A column with a cross section shown has a 27 foot length and is fixed at one end and free at the other. Using a factor of safety of 2.8, what is the allowable centric load P that can be applied to the column? Use a 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI for the elastic modulus. Remember to try this problem on your own before watching the solution up next. If the factor of safety is defined as the critical load over the current load P, the load that we're looking for would be the critical load over N. From the Euler's formula, we know we need to find the second moment of area I and the effective length LE. The effective length LE for a fixed end to free end end condition from what we learned today would be 2L. The second moment of area would be the minimum second moment of area, which in this case is the I about the Y axis. The second moment of area could then be calculated adding two pink eyes and one orange eye. Since we're finding the second moment of area about the y-axis, the bases would be the vertical dimensions and the heights would be the horizontal dimensions. With that minimum second moment of area, the given elastic modulus and the effective length, we find the critical load PCR and with it the centric load P. For other 2 minute examples on column buckling, as well as the 10 minute videos for the main topics of the Mechanics of Materials course, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.